Was it disappointing? Sure. Sure. But I'll take the point on the road every time. Ah, uh, wow. You have to get up. Do what they do. But <laughs> that was insane. Let's not get out of ourselves. Come on! I make go records, baby. I'm liking this. Hello and welcome to another episode of Hawks Recap. My name is Clay. Thanks for tuning in. Blackhawks playing their 16th game of the season in Pittsburgh. And they lose in a shootout by a score of 3-2. to two. The worst lead in hockey strikes again. Look, I don't want to really sound like I'm complaining about going ahead by two goals in a game, getting out to a 2 nothing lead, but it's kind of, well... It's a trap! I would say just... Don't feel too bad about this one. Yes, it's disappointing because you'd like to get the win. You'd like to get the two points, especially after having a two-goal lead. But the reality of the situation is the Hawks were on the road against a pretty darn good Penguins team who just the other night came back from a three-goal deficit to beat the New York Islanders in the third period. And the New York Islanders had won 10 straight games coming into that game. The Islanders are a pretty darn good team. In fact, I don't even remember the last time the Hawks have won 10 straight games, let alone this year. That certainly hasn't happened. The Hawks put up a great effort in this one, and I will take a point on the road every single time, especially in a back-to-back. -back. Also, the Hawks had not lost to the Penguins since 2014, which is pretty insane. That streak was bound to end at some point. It's actually insane that it's been that long, considering the Penguins have won two Stanley Cups since then, and they have guys like Sidney Crosby and Avengi Malkin on their team. Like, they have a good group of players, and the Hawks have just been really good against the Penguins. So, that streak was bound to end. It ended tonight, unfortunately, but it took a shootout to end it. So, I'll take it. Corey Crawford in net for the Hawks to start off this back-to-back, -back, and he had a solid outing in this one. Another solid start that's back-to-back -back for him, and that's good to see because we need him to play well. The entire point of bringing Leonard in was to have a goalie tandem, which means we need to rely on both goalies, not just one of them, not just like Leonard. We need both Leonard and Crawford to play well, and, well, Crawford lately doing his part. First period in this one was pretty even. Well, actually, the entire game was pretty even. But first period, not a whole lot of shots for either team. Neither goalie really getting tested all that much. And there's certainly no goals to show for it. So we move on to the second period where the Hawks strike first. Seven minutes into the middle frame, Brandon Saad does a nice job chipping it past Justin Schultz at the blue line to start a nice three-on-one odd man rush for the Hawks. Brandon Saad then gets it to Cuckoo, who gets it right back to Saad, who makes an athletic play, taking the puck from a skate to a stick and sending it over to Kubalik for the one-timer. He buries it past Murray. Hawks up 1-0. Not even two minutes after that, Blackhawks find themselves on another rush. Patrick Kane and Brandon Saad this time. Kane with the puck, rushing in right side. Saad's pretty well covered. Passing lane is pretty close, so Patrick Kane decides it's showtime, and he rips it by Murray short side to increase the lead to two goals. And things are looking good, but once again... It's a trap! Now the Hawks had two power plays earlier in that period, but could not convert on either of those. So despite their inefficiencies on the power play and the man advantage, at least they were able to get some goals five on five. Things are going pretty well for the Hawks, and it looks like they're going to be able to take that two-goal lead into the third period. But with about four minutes left to go in the second period... A little turnover in the neutral zone. Cuckoo cannot play the puck cleanly, and he turns it over, or at least he can't get to the puck. Malkin picks it up. Cuckoo does a decent job forcing him out wide. It seems like Malkin's going to go around the net, but right before he does, he throws it out front, and Getzel is right there. Our back checkers are not back checking hard enough, or they're just not fast enough, whatever it may be. Getzel wide open, blows it by Crawford, and it's now 2-1 to one going into the third period. Once again, another even period in the third. Hawks playing well in this game. Uh, did a good job of killing a penalty early on in the third period to keep that one-goal lead, but then just past the halfway mark, 
the Penguins with the puck in the offensive zone. Blackhawks kind of running around a little bit, and they leave Brian Rust wide open on the back post. He gets the pass. He buries it by Crawford. 2-2, two to two, and that's how this game would end in regulation, sending it to a overtime period and eventually a shootout. You can say what you want about shootouts. I'm completely fine with it. I, games need to end at some point in the regular season, and from a Blackhawks perspective, shootouts, your percentage of winning them is probably the same as your chances of winning 3-on-3 three three overtime. You win some, you lose some. That's just the way it is. Either way, you still get a point, so I'll take it. So, the Hawks grab a point on the road against a pretty decent Penguins team with Crawford in net, front end of back-to-back. Now they get to come home for the back end against the Toronto Maple Leafs, who are also on the back end of their back-to-back. They lost to the Flyers in a shootout as well tonight, so they also had to go a full five minutes of three-on-three overtime. Also, Mitch Marner got injured against the Flyers, and Frederick Anderson was the starting goalie in that game, so... Most likely, Maple Leafs will be playing their back up goalie against the Hawks. Meanwhile, the Hawks are going to have Leonard in net. Things are shaping up pretty nicely for this back end. It's a fairly shorthanded Maple Leafs team. Now, there's no guarantees. Obviously, you still have to go out and win it. Maple Leafs are still a good team. They still have offensive power, right? But I will take this situation. I will take this chance for the Hawks to get two points at home in the back end of this back-to-back and get three out of a possible four points. I will take this. This is a decent opportunity, and I hope that it comes true. Anyhow, thank you so much for watching this episode of Hawks Recap. I really hope you enjoyed it. Let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. Like, share, and subscribe. I appreciate that as always. I really do. But most importantly, stay safe, make good decisions, enjoy your Saturday night, and I'll see you real soon.